think we all saw in in 2018, right? When, when you've got a difference maker up front, it, it changes the complexion of a game. So obviously, you know, as many difference makers up there as opposed to just rolling bodies, it makes a huge difference. Uh, and I do think we've got those, we've got some candidates. I think obviously we have all know what Josh Pascal can do. And, you know, before the, you know, the injury and that halfway through the Mississippi State game, you know, if you look at the Auburn and Ole Miss and halfway through Mississippi State, he was playing as well as any defensive lineman in the SEC. And he is, right now, he's playing at a level. Uh, his body, his conditioning, his focus, uh, right now is at an elite level. And we need him to perform at that elite level. And we will not shy away, you know, with those expectations for him. And he won't shy away from those. And then, uh, you know, I know Tony just talked about, uh, you know, the, the guys that we lost, you know, and then you think about, Quentin, who played, you know, a great game last night for anybody that watched that Hall of Fame game, um, making plays, effort plays. But you've got a guy in Marquand McCall that has played significant snaps and played as a true freshman. And now he's in year four here. He understands this is his time. And his body is in as good a shape as he's been since I've been here and he's been here. We sort of came in together. So he's ready to take that step. and. We've talked about it before through my time here. When you're strong down the middle in a 3-4 defense, you know, when we talk about nose guard, inside linebacker, safety, you've got a chance to be a really good football team. You've got a chance to dominate. Um, and he's going to give us that opportunity to continue to be strong in the middle. You know, and what he's done is if you turn on, you know, you, games that he started, Georgia, Missouri, uh, different games when, when Q was out, he gives you a little bit of a chance to play a little bit more hash to hash. And he can run down plays against outside zone, outside zone schemes. So, you know, the big question mark to me, you know, from a front, you talk about all those bodies that we have to, we have to solidify that boundary tackle position. And uh, that is going to be one place where we uh, will have to rotate bodies and we're going to figure out that's why I'm holding the pencil. Because the depth chart right in, in fall camp is never in pen. And it may be a day-to-day -day thing. It could be a period-to-period -period thing where, hey, one guy's going to start you know, one rack and then another guy's going to start another rack. And they're all going to get chances to go against a really good offensive line day in and day out. Uh, and we're going to see who's going to be ready to play. And it probably will be by committee. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I think it really does. You know, I think the, the key word is sort of solidify. And it's, I, I felt good about guys and their growth coming out of spring. You know, losing Derek, uh, you know, threw a little bit of a wrench in that deal and, and threw a wrench in sort of, sort of the depth uh, of that position. And then you bring in a guy that has played in the SEC as well as he has, and you put him into the mix. Um, the, the thing that I can say, uh, you know, about Quez is that he's been able to come in and he fits. He fits the culture. He's melded right with our guys. Um, he loves them. They love him. It's, it's like he's been here for a long time. And, and that's, that's a positive. And, and that's always, you know, you, you hold your breath a little bit when you, when you go into the portal because you just don't know how it's always going to going to fit and he fits right in uh, it'll allow us to have really good competition uh, excited to see what Jared Casey can do um, you know and, and obviously DeAndre is still sort of the stalwart in that room and, and he makes that room go he's the glue and I'm looking forward to seeing him take another step this year as well and, and I think he's He's primed and ready to do that, um, but we got to keep him healthy. Uh, but I know Coach had mentioned, you know, Coach Ed and Coach Hill. They do just an unbelievable job in that strength and conditioning uh, part, and our guys look ready to go and they look ready to compete. So itching to get out there today. Coach, what about Justin Rogers? Yeah. Is he in the mix? Okay. 
he is. So, you know, when you talk about Marquand McCall, obviously he's sort of solidified his spot, you know, there at nose. But we all know a nose can't play 70, 80 snaps in a game. You know, you've got to be able to rotate that position and you can't fall off. I think uh, the big thing you, when you think about Justin, you think about Josiah, and then those other uh, front, the, the Ripkas, the Salmonales, the, the Oxes, you know, the, they kind of missed out with the COVID year. And, and freshman D linemen, they need a full year of growth and development uh, to trim that high school baby fat, to get strong in the weight room, to, to be able to, to compete, to be able to move. The movement aspect, you can't just overpower people like you did in high school. You have to be strong, physical, but you also have to be able to flip your hips, move. You know, we're going to ask him to, to, to make different movements at that position. And I think Justin, you know, is, has started to loosen up his hips. He's, he came in physically strong enough to compete on day one. But where he had to, he had to loosen up his hips and get more flexible, and he's done that and he's, he's put in the time. So I'm looking forward to those, that freshman class of defensive linemen coming into this camp and showing something. Because now is their time. They can't just say, oh, I'm a redshirt freshman. They, the very first question, like, we, we talk about depth. Yeah, we, we're, we've got bodies, but we need guys to elevate. And it can't just be, hey, what you were in high school. It's got to be what you are in the SEC right now. The first thing that pops in my mind for JJ is maturity. From where he came to where he is now, he, he, was, he was sort of a quiet to himself young man uh, when he walked in. Um, and he learned what it looks like, you know, from the Josh Pascals, from uh, Jamin Davis, from watching, you know, Josh from sort of afar, uh, about what it looks like to be a professional and to be able to hone your craft. And what he does, the time that he puts in, the commitment in his rehab um, is elite level. And he's ready when, when the time comes for him to come back from that, he is going to come back as good and, and better long term than he was last year. And we all know when he got hurt, he was a dominant force on that football field. If you, nobody looks at the score, but if you just look at the film, and when JJ played in that Alabama game, and when JJ played in that Florida game, he was as dominant a football player as anybody on that football field. So Justice uh, is a guy that, and we've, over my, you know, going into fourth year now, uh, for those that have, have been covering this whole time, we talk about that outside linebacker position, and it's a very unique position. It is not one that you just walk in and you pick up and it's easy and it's not. There's so much that is put on that position in terms of, okay, you've got to be able to set an edge. You've got to be able to drop. Right? You've got to be able to pass rush. You've got to be able to process, think, go through calls, go through block schemes. So, you, so eye progression, there's a lot to that position. And, and that's why you don't see many guys walk in on day one. And it just it makes sense. It clicks. And they're just impact guys. So he's going through that process. Um, the nice thing is, again, we had a spring. So this fall, it won't be. Uh, quite as new, and so he'll be ready to uh, to continue to progress in, in that manner.
probably the biggest change from a freshman to where he is now as a senior as anybody on the defensive roster from a maturity standpoint. And again, he would be the first to admit, and we'll, everybody continue can continue to grow in that. that. That is not a end game process, but he, he is ready. And I think you saw, and we talked about it in the spring, that when he was the starter, there was a more dialed in focus in those games last year. Those games and he wasn't, like it would drift and we'd have to try to pull him back in and rein him in. And he knows this is his opportunity, his shot, you know, him and Josh, it's their front. And, and he's taken on that leadership role. And he's, he's as focused as Marquan has ever been. Um, I mean, it was funny, he just texted me uh, this morning, said, hey, I'm, I'm all in, ready to go. And so that's, that's where his, his mind is, his mindset. We need to keep it there um, because he does have a chance to be a difference maker for us, and we need him to be that. So Vito's one, again, Vito's got a lot of skill, um, but uncontained or unbridled skill set is 50-50. And so the big, um, the big challenge that we've given to him is to stay focused and stay dialed in. And uh, he understands that. Like for, for him to be somebody that's a solid contributor for us, it has to be a down in and down out focus, understanding what is my responsibility. It can't just be float, fine ball, get ball. Because everybody loves it, and it's great when he gets it, but it can also lead to a really big play. And so uh, the thing I think we've done here pretty well uh, over the last several years is we've been in the top of the country and not allowing big plays, not allowing explosive plays. And call it what you will, bend, don't break, this or that, whatever you want to call it, is when we keep the ball in front of us, Right, we get an opportunity, right, to make a play on the next play, and obviously led the nation in turnovers. We need to do that again this year, or at least first in the SEC. Uh, and if we can continue to do that and add some of those difference-making plays, we know we understand that we need to get and affect the quarterback more often this year. Our guy. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell our guys. They understand the issues. And some of it's uh, on me. A lot of it's on me. And I'll take that. And But going forward, all right, we're still not going to – just understand, if the more aggressive you get, the more big plays you could potentially give up. And so if we get more aggressive, then everybody better be on the same page and understand where the softness and the weakness are. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.